Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it so very much. Welcome. My name is Aiden. I'm so happy that you are here. I'm kind of excited. Uh, Dossier contacted me once again and asked me if I wanted to extend our partnership and talk about their fragrances for a few more months. And I said yes, because I have been really enjoying the fragrances that I got from them. Uh, I don't have the one with me because I left it at my parents' house because I'm trying to rotate and I don't want to use it all up. I have been really loving uh, my fragrances there and then floral marshmallow. Oh my gosh. It's been a little warm, but I'm so excited. Like I want to be wearing, I'm planning to wear that one like every day here coming up really soon. So I was excited to try some other ones. These are fragrances that I've smelled like once in store because they're not fragrances I have uh, regular access to. But I was really excited because I was like, oh, I think I'd like, I think these would be interesting to try. So we're, we're going to talk about two fragrances ex inspired by Le Labo. And the only time I've been to uh, anywhere near Le Labo is when I was visiting my aunt and she lives in Oregon. And I went to the, one of the Portland Nordstrom stores. I don't know if they have more than one. I think they do. Anyway, I was there and I was looking and they... I talked to the uh, rep for Le Labo there and sprayed some different things, tried some different scents, and they were interesting. They're way out of my budget, so that's why I like Dossier so much more because they are so much more affordable. So if you don't know about Dossier, they are um, a fragrance company that is inspired by other fragrances, niche fragrances, uh, some fragrances that are no longer available as well, and they sell them for a fraction of the price because they don't have that luxury addition to them, they have the same quality ingredients and um, they always have discounts. I will have my code here on the screen as if you are interested in trying them out. So Dossier has a pretty good repertoire of fragrances already, but they are always adding in new ones and they're always taking suggestions. I keep wanting them to do Bitter Peach by Tom Ford. Please, please. I really want that fragrance, but uh, Tom Ford fragrances have gone up so immensely since I first looked at Bitter Peach. It is not one that um, is within my reach. Plus, there is no way I'm not the type of person who can drop 300 plus dollars on a bottle of perfume, even $200. It just the thought of that, even if I saved up, that just makes me feel a little physically ill because of like my financial situation. I know other people drop it and I am so happy for you if you if you can do that. But for me, I'd rather have um, more fragrances that are less expensive so I don't feel uh, quite like if I'm spraying them, I don't, I don't know, not, don't have that anxiety. Dossier fragrances don't give me that anxiety because they are all uh, affordably priced. They range uh, in, usually around the $39 range. They have different prices depending on what the ingredients are in them, but they also all offer a bulk discount. So the more bottles you buy, the more that you save, which is always uh, exciting as well. They also offer free returns and exchanges. So if you purchase a fragrance that you don't enjoy, you can uh, contact them and exchange it or return it. No questions asked. If you do decide to put in an order with Dossier, I will have a link in my description box down below. And then don't forget to use my code because you save a little bit of money. Just disclaimer, even though they sent these fragrances to me, my uh, opinions are my own. Sometimes I like the scents, sometimes I don't. Usually it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the fragrance or, you know, Dossier from every fragrance that I've tried has really high quality fragrances. Just, it might not be the scent for me. And that happens with like a lot of fragrances. There's a lot of fragrances that just don't agree with me. I will always be honest in my reviews, whether I like them or not, or who I think will like them. So let me tell you about the two fragrances that I picked up. I asked for Floral Rose, and then I also asked for Citrus Tea. That one's upside down. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's pretty standard. This is part of the reason why they don't charge as much, because you're not paying for all the packaging that you literally just throughout and these are totally recyclable because they don't have that glossy stuff on them it's so much better for the environment and then it does say the name on the side when you open it up 
it looks like this. It says, Iconic Sense, Designer Quality, No Markups. And then you get a little card that tells you about the fragrance on the back and then the bottle itself. This is what it looks like. This one is Floral Rose. Like I said, it tells you the scent notes on it and then it has the cap. I like the caps because yes, they're magnetic, but they are on their sturdy so that you can, I am holding my hand up under here, but they're not going to go anywhere. How many of us have accidentally lifted a, a bottle by its lid and it's crashed or something you, and you're like, stomach drops because you feel like you're going to break one of your babies, uh, one of your expensive fragrances. You don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about that with Dossier, which is very, very nice. Floral Rose is inspired by Le Labo's Rose 31. Like I said, Le Labo, that, that's my uh, connection this month. So the top notes are Rose Centifolia, Cumin, middle notes are Vetiver, Incense, Cedarwood, Base notes are musk, citrus, cis, cistus. I was reading that as citrus. I don't know why. Um, and amber. And the concentration on this one is 20%, which is pretty, pretty high. We're going to give it a spray. The one thing I, I'm a little nervous about with this fragrance, I love roses, but um, incense tends to come out on my skin. That's why Delina is not a fragrance that I enjoy at all. Delina and Delina, Delina exclusive. They both like turn really woody on me. If there's a wood note, it can turn really woody on me. Angel Nova does the same thing, which is kind of disappointing. I'm getting the rose. I'm also getting a little bit of that cumin. I'm not always the biggest fan of cumin. Like I love to eat cumin, but um, the scent, not, not so much in a perfume is what I'm finding. The rose in here is, it's an interesting mix though. So I'm getting like the rose, but I'm also, it feels very, I don't want to say flat, but it doesn't have that sweetness that a lot of like feminine fragrances have. This one is definitely a unisex fragrance. It doesn't have like, there's usually like a burst of something that's really bright. And that's what I usually look for in fragrances, but I'm getting that rose and I'm like, oh, it smells so good. But then I'm like, there's so many other things going on. It's very interesting. I'm getting a little of the vetiver in there. This one I'm really interested to wear on my skin because I feel like the rose is really pretty and I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. I like it. And it's nothing to do with quality. Like the quality is there. Like it is a complex fragrance. It smells really it smells good, but it, I don't know how I'm going to like it on my skin because I tend to like something just a little sweeter, um, a little bit more feminine on my skin. Otherwise, like it can play with my mood. Fragrances play so much with my mood. Like if I need to have something semi happy uh, or like my whole mood just goes down. The other day I was wearing uh, Tom Ford's Effing Fabulous and I was so irritated. Like I finally, when I started, I scrubbed it off as much as I could and like covered it with something else. And then I felt a little bit better, but man, like there are certain scents that just bring you down, man. But other people really love that. I think this is a very complex scent. I think if you like niche fragrances, I think if you like unisex fragrances, this is an amazing one. This one is going to be like, I'm going to have to be in a super mood to wear it. Yeah, I think it's really nice, but I just don't know if it's for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I'm glad, like, I'm glad to have this one that I can wear and not feel guilty about instead of having like a really expensive one that I'm like, I must wear this every day. Just use it up to get my money's worth. This one, I can wear it when I feel like it and not when I don't. All right, next up we have citrus tea and same packaging, all, all of that goodies, all that good stuff. So citrus tea is 25% concentration and the top notes are bergamot, fig, and black tea. Middle notes are bay leaf, tobacco, jasmine, vetiver. Base notes are cedarwood, musk, hay, peach, and incense. This is uh, based on Tainor or... Um, 
it looks like the, but it's Taynor 29. The, uh, the rose one was 31. Give this one a spray. I know the other one that I smelled that I thought was kind of interesting was another 13, I think is it, it, it was. And the rep, when I talked to them, said that that one was really popular in the Portland area, which I thought was interesting. But I could see why, because it's, um, it was similar in nature to me as Mesa Margiela uh, after the rain. Like there's that kind of wet smell to it, but not like the wet concrete. Now this one I like better than Rose. Just it, there's a little bit more brightness to it and that's definitely from that bergamot and the fig. But I'm also getting, there's something like smoky. Oh, it has incense, duh. Sometimes I forget what the notes are just after I say them. It's kind of, it's like a smoky, um, I get a little bit of the tea I don't feel like it's as heavy on the tea as in like the Guerlain La Petite Robe Noir line. Like that one I really get the tea uh, feel of. Not so much this one. I think the incense is overbearing it just a little bit. This is another one I'm really interested to see how it wears on my skin. Um, it's definitely not one I want to wear right now. It's still pretty warm here. This is something I feel like I would want to wear in like cooler weather. like. 50s, 40s, uh, maybe not like super, super cold in the 30s or anything, but hmm, I think 80s, it's still 80s, 70s, still too hot to wear this on, but I think it's because of that, that smoky quality to it. I think this is another one that's a really good unisex fragrance. I don't know if I get the bay leaf. I'm trying to remember what a bay leaf smells like. I know I've cooked, like, <laughs> I have not cooked with bay leaf, but I know that I have been around people who have cooked with bay leaves. I can't think of, like, I know, like, soups, but I've never, like, if I make soup, it's not usually, it wouldn't have a bay leaf in it. This one is interesting. I think of the two... I like citrus tea just a little bit more than the floral rose. I think they're both good scents. I think if you like Le Labo or if you've been interested in them, these are good. I feel like this one, I mean, going from my scent memory, I feel like this one has a little bit more brightness to it than the original uh, Le Labo. This one, I feel like is pretty on par, the floral rose. I like them both. I feel like they are good. Uh, inspirations of the fragrances and I feel like these would both be good if you're liking looking for some unisex scents some fall scents I feel like these are both really good for that so let me know if you've tried either of these in the dossier or in the Le Labo version let me know down below let me know your thoughts on them let me know if there's certain fragrances that you would like to see dossier do let me know if there's ones that you would like to see me talk about I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for stopping by and I can't wait to talk to you next time.